Please be seated. Um, I'm just wondering whether that was deliberate. <laughs> Okay, um, the Honorable John Bundy, Cabinet Secretary for the National Treasury and Economic Planning. Madam Veronica Nduva, Secretary General of uh, the East African Community, or her representative. Mr. Anthony Mora, Chair of the Kenya Revenue Authority Board of Directors, members of the KRA Board, Mr. Humphrey Watanga, the KRA Commissioner General, all Commissioner Generals from other African countries, Madam Giang Demita Chinwude, Director of Customs Administration, African Continental Free Trade Area, Mr. Ian Sanders, Secretary General World Customs Organization, stakeholders and partners, distinguished delegates, ladies and gentlemen. Good morning. It is my pleasure to join you today for this year's Africa Customs and Trade Conference on Trade Facilitation and Domestic Resource Mobilization in the Digital Age. I commend the Kenya Revenue Authority for meticulously organizing and hosting this summit. To you all participants from across Africa and beyond, I take this opportunity on behalf of the government and people of Kenya to welcome you to Nairobi. Your perspectives and experiences will enrich the key discussions and outcomes of this timely summit. This year's summit envisions enhanced synergy and collaboration in trade facilitation, exchange of information, and knowledge sharing with a focus on innovation, partnerships, and the adoption of best practices to ensure we meet the growing physical needs of our countries. In an interconnected global economy, the significance of trade facilitation as a key driver of economic growth and domestic resource mobilization cannot be overstated. Both elements are critical for enhancing economic resilience, promoting sustainable development, and ensuring that our nations can harness their potential to create inclusive, thriving economies. Additionally, it is important to build responsive policy frameworks, enable business ecosystems, and administrative procedures that enhance resource mobilization. Therefore, effective stakeholder engagement plays a central role in this initiative. Governments, the private sector, civil society, international organizations, and consumers are all critical players in the pursuit of sustainable economic growth. Such collaborative engagements and partnerships enable governments to develop sound policies that encourage investment, job creation, and ultimately economic growth. Notably, partnerships with the international organizations including the East African Community, the African Continental Free Trade Area, and the World Customs Organizations, provide technical support, good practices, and knowledge sharing that enhance our ability to collect taxes and manage resources effectively. Furthermore, open dialogue and collaboration among these stakeholders fosters trust and a deeper understanding in dealing with emerging challenges and opportunities. Indeed, customs reforms, taxation policy improvements, 
and simplified trade regulations require input from a wide and diverse range of stakeholders to ensure that they meet the practical needs of businesses while maximizing the revenue potential for governments. This summit therefore presents a great opportunity for us to engage in constructive dialogue that will lead to meaningful frameworks, responsive administrative procedures, and policy reforms whose objective is to generate additional revenue for governments and improve the ease of doing business within our jurisdictions. We therefore need to leverage the power of rapid innovation and technological advancements currently driving the global economy. Tax administration must proactively adopt technology-driven solutions and systems that facilitate trade and improve domestic resource mobilization. The innovations ranging from digital taxation platforms that simplify compliance to blockchain technologies that enhance transparency in trade logistics offer powerful tools for revenue generation and efficient trade. In our experience as a country, automating customs procedures has significantly reduced cargo clearance times across the East African communities, common border points. This has greatly enhanced the movement of goods and facilitated international trade. Similarly, adopting electronic invoicing systems helps to integrate informal economy into the formal tax base, widening the scope of, for domestic resource mobilization. We should think, rethink traditional tax rules and be prepared to implement global solutions that can ensure all sectors contribute equitably to the national resource base. The Kenya government, under His Excellency Dr. William Ruto, will continue to invest in capacity building and technical skills training for the public servants to fully leverage these technologies and maximize the gains from innovation. Accordingly, it is encouraging to note that the program of this summit has not only placed emphasis on unlocking revenue potential and digital integration in the tax system, but also captured critical matters of our time, including efficient maritime services, environmental taxation, and green customs, cybersecurity, smart customs in the digital age, risk management, and gender equality. It will be interesting to get the Kenyan, African, and global perspectives on these and other related matters, including artificial intelligence, tax justice, and the challenges of navigating through trade facilitation in the digital era. In conclusion, let me emphasize that trade facilitation and domestic resource mobilization are essential pillars of economic development. Through strong stakeholder engagement, meaningful partnerships, innovative practices, and adherence to international tax frameworks, we can unlock the full potential of these areas to enhance our physical capacities and drive socioeconomic growth. This underscores the fact that our customs and taxation policy reforms directly contribute to sustainable development goals, human security, and dignity. In short, these efforts are not an end in themselves, but a means to ensure that our nations thrive and that our citizens enjoy the benefits of a well-managed, well-funded, prosperous economy. Before I pronounce the conference open, let me borrow a leaf from uh, my colleague, uh, Anu Bombandi, uh, just to also set 
point out one or two things that I think may require um, attention and thought. First, let me start very briefly on a historical journey. Uh, I stand here because we are Kenyans and I'm proud to say that uh, I was one of the people who pioneered the creation of the Kenya Revenue Authority. At that time, you all remember, we had three different departments, the Customs Department, uh, Customs and Excess Department, we had the Income Tax Department, and I think the Sales Tax uh, Department. And uh, th that structure had reached at the end of its usefulness, if I may call it that way. And uh, when I look around, I can see some of the early commissioners of K KRA. I can see my friend there, Commissioner General there. And it was not easy because people were used to certain things and you had to change. Uh, some had established gravy trains in, within that old system. And uh, here you are now beginning to talk about changing the whole structure and uh, bringing in uh, technology and new approaches. It was not easy. It was a political battle. Um, even to introduce the PIN, the personal identification number, uh, the tax cheats moved all over. They even reached the churches until the churches were preaching that the pin number is the number of the devil. Basically to try and scare reform in, in, in uh, the whole space around uh, tax collection and so forth. Of course they failed. And KRA came into being. And indeed, the truth be told, KRA did and has substantially improved the whole revenue collection structure and culture in the country, no doubt. But we have now reached a stage where we need to go a notch higher. We must, as we have said in our statements, we must now go a notch higher, become more facilitative, move away from being ob obstructionists, so that we can now really benefit from technology and also allow us to develop trade amongst each other. I'm sure the person from the Africa Continental Free Trade Area will share a lot of data with you. And it is embarrassing that the level of trade between African countries is minuscule compared to what we do with the rest of the world. We must correct some of these things. So there is an important agenda uh, for you, and I want you to really give it some serious thought so that we can graduate from where we are to the next uh, level. Um, the other thing that I thought is important, the minister touched on it, and he talked of the issue of in many different ways, but he was focusing on corruption. I want to confess to something, that if you did read uh, in the papers, it is true that after consultations with the President of the Republic of Kenya and the Treasury, the government of Kenya has, on its own volition, requested the International Monetary Fund, IMF, to conduct a governance and corruption diagnostic in Kenya.
and mark my words on our own pollution. We have requested for a governance and corruption diagnostic. And I signed off that request on behalf of the government of Guinea. So no institution is going to be free from this diagnostic. That includes the KRA. Corruption is across the board and fundamental and key institutions that drive the economy and economies will all be subject to this diagnostic. Therefore, it is important that I say this publicly so that we can all know that we need to take that bold step and go a notch higher. The minister did indicate some things. I hope there are genuine reasons for not having implemented some of the programs that he was talking about. But if it turns out that it was by design that somebody was deliberately making sure that certain aspects of the technology are not implemented or are not put in place, then the diagnostic will catch up with you. So, and this message goes to other institutions, not necessarily KRA alone, but even ministries, other departments. This will be a thorough diagnostic, and it is because the issue of corruption keeps coming back. It keeps coming back. So we must get to terms and figure out where is it domiciled. And then we start finding solutions collectively as a nation uh, to be able to get our citizens to benefit fully uh, from the tax that they pay. So, ladies and gentlemen, um, I borrowed a leaf from my colleague. The message I've put across is not a threat, but actually it is a positive message that we should embrace and we should collaborate as a government so that we come to, to, to we, we have a realistic approach to what ails us and then we can all cast away this dark cloud of corruption that seems to impede business not just in Kenya but in many other countries. Uh, sometimes even in the developed countries but even within the African continent we really need to take the bull by the horns and KRA and other tax entities uh, uh, within the continent will play a very, very pivotal role in uh, dealing with this. And we do also want to appeal to our friends and partners to work very, very closely with us on this particular issue. Our service providers, help us because pressure is mounting. The demographics on the African continent are telling us that unless we are creating jobs quickly for the young people, unless we are giving them proper opportunities, we are likely to come face to face with extremely serious headwinds. So it is time for us to collectively hold hands and find solutions, and rapidly. Thank you so much, and it is now my, my pleasure to declare this summit uh, officially open. Thank you.
Mr. PCS. Thank you very much, sir. If I may kindly, humbly request you if you could just come back to the stage. We take a few photos before we finish. And the first photo, we, we may be seated, ladies and gentlemen, as the PCS comes for a photo. Allow me to quickly call up the lineup of photos. Um, once the PCS has recognized you in an international forum, I think it will only be fitting for you to take a photo with him. So let me kindly request Mr. John Zafari, the Commissioner General, the third Commissioner General of the CARE, who is currently the chairman of the Kenya Shippers Council to please um, take this very um, honorable picture of pioneers of the Kenya Revenue Authority, if I might add, um, His Excellency um, and Mr. Safari are the pioneers.